Well, hello there. I'm Leonardo, a civil engineer from Brazil and graduate student in fluid mechanics. Well, for this video, I would like to talk more in more detail about the boundary conditions for navy stokes, and some general aspects, and uh, its importance for a fluid dynamics problem, and of course, uh, computational fluid dynamics problem, CFD, which in either case, <clears throat> it would be a very important topic if you're interested in this uh, subject, right? So, uh, in, for any problem regarding uh, initial condition problem or uh, partial differential equation, we must know uh, how does uh, this quantity, which, are, which is our variable, which are we solving for, how does it behave in the limits of our domain of interest? Okay. So, for the particular case of the Stokes equation, in order to be a fully determined mathematical problem, we must know three information, right? So, we must know uh, what was the initial condition for velocity and pressure at the time zero or time sub zero. Uh, we must know uh, the boundary conditions for velocity and pressure and we must know uh, the size of our physical domain of interest uh, the limits of this domain of interest okay here I wrote uh, n u and r p because in certain cases for incompressive flow when you have only information about the initial velocity field, you can obtain information for the pressure field uh, starting from a Poisson equation for the pressure. Right, so you must know either the velocity or the pressure field. And we must know uh, the initial, the boundary conditions for the velocity and or the pressure. But if you only have a velocity, you can obtain pressure from the velocity field. So to put it simply, uh, what is uh, initial? What is initial condition? Uh, what was the state at the, of the fluid at the beginning of the phenomenon study? So we took uh, a piece from the universe, a piece where there is occurring uh, fluid flow, and at this instant of time, uh, how was what was exactly the state of this fluid flow? Was it at rest? Was it already at uh, flowing under such conditions? Are we studying uh, a flow which we we started? We run a simulation from some time and then stop it. So this would be the initial conditions. Well, the boundary conditions. How the domain of interest connects with the rest of the universe around it. So you took uh, a portion of this fluid, a portion of the universe where it's occurring fluid flow. So how does this fluid flow connect with the rest of the universe surrounding it? The medium which is surrounding this fluid flow. Okay, so let's say we have uh, a waterfall here, right, for example, and we have fluid flowing from here to here, so here is water flowing, so we we could be interested only in a part of this flow, which could be this. This could be our domain of interest, right? So let's say, let's call this domain omega. 
then our domain of interest would be something like this. Here it is in 2D. And here it's water. And here it is air. Air and water. So for this particular case, uh, we must know the boundary conditions here. On this face, here, and here. So we isolated a portion of a bigger phenomenon, and we study a small portion of it okay which brings us to the definition of the physical domain so which are the dimensions of the portion of the universe study on which the flow occurs so it will be this dimension here let's call it l x our length in the x direction and here our length in y direction so in this particular case, Lx and Ly will be the dimensions of our domain of interest. <clears throat> so putting it to a mathematical statement, or the mathematical problem of solving the Navier-Stokes equation could be defined as follows. For a given physical domain omega in Rn, an n-dimensional outer space, and of course, goes from 1 to 3, we can solve a uh, one-dimensional Navier-Stokes, a two-dimensional Navier-Stokes, and a three-dimensional Navier-Stokes. We are interested uh, in a particular solution of Navier-Stokes and continuity equations, which are our governing equations for incompressive Newtonian fluid flow, right? Which satisfies the uh, initial conditions that t equals t is uh, zero. Okay, so here is our initial condition for the velocity, and here it is our initial condition for pressure, which is optional. And the last information that we need for solving this mathematical problem is the corresponding boundary conditions of the limits of omega on the limits of our domain which will be here here and here right so uh, there is uh, an issue in fluid dynamics which of course here is the are the boundary conditions that we will utilize so how does one know if a current boundary condition is accurate how can we assure that they represent correctly the physics governing this particular fluid uh, flow, this flow phenomenon, the physics that are occurring, the governing physics at the boundaries of our domain? And, well, do they make sense? Are they physically reasonable? Well, how can we choose then a proper boundary condition for velocity and pressure? Well, if you're interested in solving the, numeric, uh, the Navier-Stokes numerically, there is no default recipe for uh, an accurate boundary condition. In fact, uh, when solving complex flows, like uh, could be a multi-phase flow, in the case when there's water and air, or cases when there is a multi-phase flow with more than two phases, and uh, let's say a chemical reaction it's not as always it's not always uh, as straightforward as one might think that how to determine a boundary condition so the more complex the flow we are studying the more complicated the boundary conditions get and often they start uh, they stop uh, giving correct results so let us uh, limit ourselves to the case of monophase flow, in the, for example, the flow of, of water around a certain object, the flow of air around a 
wind or a flow of certain fluid in a pipe. So for this particular case, uh, the most often you utilize boundary conditions are the Dirichlet uh, boundary condition, which is also known as first type boundary condition. The expression from this boundary condition is to assign a certain velocity or a certain value for pressure at a certain boundary of our domain of interest. So, for example, you can say that velocity at a certain boundary is zero. Take, for example, this flow here. Well, we have this channel. which is filled with some fluid, compressive fluid, which flows from A to B, and incompressive fluid, and Newtonian with constant uh, density and dynamic viscosity. So we are interested in study this portion of the flow, which is known as, known as lead driven cavity flow. Okay, so if we make a zoom here, we have something like this. It's a square cavity, and We have here typically a vortex, which will be from here, a zone of circulation. So all boundary conditions here on a solid wall would be typically velocity of the fluid equals zero at the wall. Let's say in One or face or face one here our second face and here is our third face of the our domain of interest and here we will have a constant value for our velocity which could be for example a constant velocity in the x direction right so these boundary conditions here will be a typical Dirichlet type or first type boundary conditions okay for our second boundary condition so for our second time <coughs> boundary condition which is known as Neumann boundary condition. We have a prescribed value for our derivative of a certain quantity or flux of this quantity over a certain part of our domain. So for velocity, for example, <clears throat> we could say that the derivative of the velocity in a for a normal vector in this part of the domain is equal to a constant value, right? So, for example, let's say we have a two-dimensional flow over an obstacle, let's say a circular cylinder. So here we have our flow. which should be typically something like this. We have, for a low radius number, we have a pair of vortices over here. And far for a non-obstacle, our streamlines for our flow will be unstable. Okay. So over here, we have a Dirichlet type 
boundary condition which is the condition for a wall here we would have a constant velocity profile and here in the direction that is a normal to the wall it is zero so the flux of velocity in this direction here in the y direction is equal to zero which means that you can only have uh, tangent uh, variations of velocity close to this boundary here okay so here it do have something equal to here so this typically would be a new Neumann boundary condition also known as free slip boundary condition and the Richelieu uh, boundary condition in fluid mechanics is known as the no slip boundary condition so here at the wall of the cylinder we will have a no slip boundary condition and here a slip boundary condition for the outlet uh, boundary condition we will have an equation which is typically we could have an equation which is typically a convection equation which let's say a constant or mean velocity here and this will be equal to zero right so this uh, pure convection equation for velocity can be think as uh, outlet condition for velocity so this here would be <clears throat> a more complex type of boundary condition so at the inlet we have a typical Dirichlet boundary condition uh, the bottom and top boundaries would have a uh, free slip boundary condition and Neumann boundary condition at the cylinder wall uh, the Richelieu type condition in this case the no slip boundary condition it's important to note here that we can only say that it's a no slip boundary condition when we are imposing a zero velocity <clears throat> and for the outlet boundary condition we could use this pure convection equation. A third type of boundary condition uh, would be known as the Robin boundary condition. In this case, it involves a linear combination of the Dirichlet type boundary condition and Neumann type boundary condition. So we have these coefficients here, this constants a and b, and the sum of this two quantities here would be equal to a constant on a certain part of our domain omega. So this equation here is often used in heat transfer problems, in particular uh, problems that involve insulation or a complex <coughs> combination between the flux of heat and a prescribed uh, temperature at a certain boundary. So thank you for watching, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and as always leave your feedback, thank you.